is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord.
atmosphere of deliverance in this place today. There's an atmosphere of victory that's in this house. Thank God. It's a good time to read my text. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. How many of you believe that it's not going to stop with worship? God's getting ready to perform the miraculous through His Word. Amen. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. I want to preach to you for a few minutes the help of the Lord on this subject. A life transformed. A life transformed. Lord, we thank you. Wow, what a powerful presence is in this house. I thank you so much for this privilege to be together, the body of Christ. For those who are watching online, I pray, God, that your spirit would continue to move and breathe life into lifeless situations, bring hope into hopeless situations. I pray, challenge us, encourage us, strengthen us, oh God. Let miracles be released in this house. I pray in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And let this church say amen. One more time, clap your hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, he is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's keep that going. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing and worshiping. The Lord Jesus Christ is somewhat predictably unpredictable. Just when you think you have him all figured out, he'll pay taxes by a coin and a fish's mouth. Just when you think you know how he'll deal with a situation, he'll put mud on a blind man and then tell him to go wash it off. Just about the time you've got all the answers you'll find him calling dead girls just sleeping, facing a hungry multitude with a half dozen fish sandwiches, or strolling on a stormy sea at 3 a.m. in the morning. One thing I do find consistent about him is that he always changes people when he touches them. I never read in the scripture where he spoke or where he touched and lives were not changed. Zacchaeus goes from a cheater to a man making restoration after one lunch with Jesus. Andrew and John leave the nets and follow him at one command. Lepers were cleansed by one touch of Jesus. Devils departed at one word. Next week wasn't like last week because of Jesus. The future was different than the past because of Jesus. Tomorrow looked brighter than yesterday because Jesus touched Jesus. He finds you here, but he takes you there. 
He picks up one thing, but he puts together something else. He meets you where you are, but he propels you to where he wants you to be. Never when Jesus touches or speaks are you going to leave the same way. No, when Jesus touches you, friend, you're going to have a changed life. When Jesus speaks a word over you, you're going to in this house today if you will hear this word of God hear me today when Jesus speaks your life's going to be changed when Jesus moves upon you your life's going to be transformed in Acts chapter 3 we read of the first recorded divine moment in the lives of the apostles after the day of Pentecost probably some time had passed The latter verses of chapter 2 indicate some patterns of behavior in the church that point to the passage of time. Peter and John are making their way into the temple at 3 p.m. for prayer. Now please note that these two apostles, these great heroes of faith that we esteem so highly, they recognized their need to pray. Yes, they had the Holy Ghost. Yes, they had just experienced Pentecost and spoke in other tongues. Yes, they had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. And yes, they still recognize their need to pray. If we are going to be the church God wants us to be, it is going to be because we regularly, fervently pray. Y'all were all excited and preaching with me when I was preaching about miracles. But if we're going to see the miraculous, it's going to come because a church is praying. It's going to come because people are praying and seeking God. Those apostles never would have been used by God in the miraculous had they not had a relationship with God. If you want to get to a place of laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. If you want to lay hands on a deaf ear and see it open up. If you want to see... If you want to lay hands on somebody in their life and their marriage be restored, it's going to happen because you have been praying. That was free. That's not my notes. Verse 2 tells us of a certain lame man. He had never walked. No name. Only one of many who cluttered the streets of Jerusalem. He was of no consequence in the worldwide scheme of things. Really, Really not recognizable. But on that day, he had an appointment with divine destiny. The Bible says that they laid him every day at the gate called Beautiful for some 40 years. The sad thing is that this gate was at the outside of the temple complex. This didn't place him near the inner court. He was just at the fringes, just outside of where he really wanted to be. He wasn't close enough to see the glory of God radiate from the holy place. He wasn't close enough to see the sacrifices being made. He wasn't close enough to see the priests and all the ceremony that took place. Others were enjoying all the rich blessings of worship. While he was just lying nearby wishing that he could be closer. Others went home with testimonies while he just was lying outside the temple. He watched them come and go. He saw others rejoice. He looked at faces of those who received their miracle. But he was just lying at the gate for 40 years every day. He was just close enough to get a little bit of what someone else had. Why could he not enter in? He was crippled. I don't know what caused it. You can't always put your finger on the reason why things happen the way they do in life. Things don't always make sense, do they? I only know, however, that it kept him out. It prevented him from enjoying what the others were able to taste and experience. He was crippled from his mother's womb. The church, can I just say, is your mother. Some of you have been crippled ever since you've been in the church. You heard me right. Ever since you've been in the church, your worship has been crippled. Your giving has been crippled. Your prayer life has been crippled. Your peace has been crippled. Your righteous conduct has been crippled. Oh, you've always been around. Everyone knows where to find you. They could find him at the gate. They knew where he was to be found. In fact, you might come every service, but you're just lying there, watching, wishing, longing, begging. Can I have a little bit of that commitment? Can I have a touch of that joy? Can I experience some of that worship? Why are they getting a blessing and I'm not? He sees Peter and John, this man does, coming into the temple and 
He asked for alms. The word literally means mercy. Peter is prompted by the Holy Ghost. He stops everything and he turns towards that man. The Bible says he fastened his eyes on him. I see him like a laser beam zeroing in on this man. God always responds to a cry for mercy. He always stops what he's doing when somebody cries out for mercy and cries out for a touch from God. If you have come into this place today, let me stop right here and just say, if you cry out for mercy, God is not going to turn a deaf ear towards you. If you cry out and say, God, I need a touch from you. If you stop, if you turn your eyes upon him and you forget everything else around you, you forget your crippled state and you say, God, I need something to give in my life. I need a breakthrough in my spirit. God is not going to turn a deaf ear towards you. God is not going to turn his head away from you. No, he's going to look at you and he's going to respond to that cry of mercy. Let me say right here, also someone in here has caught God's attention today. He has his eye fastened upon you. He saw you when you made that decision to come to the house of God today. He saw it when I was pacing in the front of the sanctuary last night saying, God, what do you want me to say to them? And he spoke to me and said, tell somebody, tell them in that place today that I have not forgotten them. They are not forgotten, but I love them in the midst of their trouble, in the midst of their strife, in the midst of their pain. And if they will turn their eyes upon on me. Anybody believe that God can still speak to a man to deliver a message to you personally? I'm here to tell you, God spoke to me last night as I was praying to tell somebody, you are not forgotten, you are still loved, and in the midst of your pain, he is with you. Clap your hands up, you're thankful for what God will speak to us. His eye is fastened upon you. Do you really think you've lost him? Or that he's lost you? That somehow your pain, your questions, your confusion, or even your mistakes have rendered you missing in action and that God does not know where you are? Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always. Even until the end of the world, let me tell you what the Lord is telling somebody in this place uh, that you may have been off to the side uh, in the church silently whispering, mercy, 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 have mercy on me, help me, God. And God has stopped this service uh, for you right now. He has dug his feet into the heavens and he has halted everything else uh, to zero in on your cry. He has fastened his eye upon you. Oh yeah, you've got that crippled emotion. That scar that won't go away. That habit that just haunts you. That fear that torments you. That question that has no answer. That loneliness, that loneliness that knows no comfort. That pain that nothing else seems to be able to soothe. And the Holy Ghost said to tell you that he has heard your cry. And that he sees you today. And that he has stopped everything for you. I don't know that you believe that God is speaking that way. But I'm here to tell somebody who will hear the voice of God today. That his eye is fastened upon you. And I'm going to stop right here at this moment in this service. So that somebody can respond to God. The Holy Ghost said to tell somebody in this house. He has heard your cry. He sees you. You are not forgotten. You have not been forsaken. He believes in you. Lift your hands all across this house. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in hearts right now. I feel the Holy Ghost moving online right now. If you need what God's speaking to you, lift your hands right where you are and let God begin to minister to you.
Come on, somebody walked into this place hurting. Somebody walked into this place broken. Somebody walked into this place with suicidal thoughts. But he wants you to know you are not forgotten. You have not been forsaken. He loves you. He cares about you. And he's got a purpose for your life. Somebody needs to fasten your eyes upon him. Come on, somebody in this house needs to get your eyes off of your problem, off of your crippled state, off of your crippled emotion, off of your hurt and your pain, off of your offense, and you need to get them on Jesus. Woo. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about? Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. If you believe that, shout amen. Amen. When he sees that this man is divided in his attention, the apostle Peter says, look on us. I give you that same injunction today. Look on him. Don't miss this moment. Who knows when it will come again. Don't miss this moment today that God has given you attention. Focus. Notice verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Now, I rather doubt that he was expecting what he got. (laughs) But he did look expecting. Hope for a blessing was in his look. Yeah, he was expecting some alms. Help me out with some alms. I'm expecting that. Give me some alms. And yes, it wasn't maybe a miracle that he was expecting, but at least he was expecting. And great things happen when people come with expectancy. You may have come into this service expecting something totally different, but God has another plan for you. God's got something better than silver and gold. God's got something better than what you are accustomed to receiving in a church service but God's got something better anybody believe God's got something better than we can even imagine God's got something better than we can even come looking he looked with expectancy he heeded to their voice boy that's a good lesson for us isn't it heeding to his voice he heeded to their voices And he expected to receive something of them. When you look at him, expect something. I expect miracles today. When I prayed for this service, I came into this house expecting miracles today. I expected comfort to be in this house today. I expect deliverance to be in this place today. I expect a Holy Ghost outpouring in this house upon people who have grown cold and weary and tired in their spirit. There is a new thing that God wants to do in you. There is a new thing that God has in store for you. I hope you haven't come with your hands full and saying, I hope they preach me into the altar, but you come with the expectancy. It's saying, God, whatever you want to do, I'm open. I want it. I hadn't come to play patty cake church in this hour in which we live in. We can't afford to just come and go through the motions. We're living in the last days. We need miracles in this house. We need miracles in families. We need miracles in marriages. We need miracles in bodies and in minds. If you agree with that, will you clap your hands and shout amen? I feel expectancy rising in this house right now. Come on, somebody lift up that praise and begin to expect God for the impossible. Mm. I expect it. I'm looking at him. You can look at that crippled limb all you want to, but I'm looking at him. Again and again and again, I've got to look to him. Expecting, expecting, expecting. Peter said, I may not have what you thought I had, but let me tell you what I do have. Silver and gold, I can't help you there. I'm just a preacher. 
He said, but I've got something that will take you from looking to leaping. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And when he spoke those words, suddenly. That man wasn't looking for another revival. He didn't need another Sunday. He didn't wait for a faster song or a slower song or just the right sermon or just the right man or woman standing in the pulpit to preach what he wanted to hear. No, when he expected, when he looked, and when he heard the words, suddenly that man received what he had always desired. Strength flowed into his ankle bones. What had been crippled was suddenly better than new. New emotions, new peace, new life, new salvation. He didn't just stand up. The Bible says he leaping up, he stood. And walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. The very thing that was always out of reach. God put within his reach and made possible. You say, my God, Pastor, what energy drink did you drink before this service? I can honestly say none. Didn't even have coffee this morning. And I'm feeling it. Can I tell somebody in this house? (laughs) The very thing that had been crippled in that man's life became strong. Your crippled joy can laugh again. Your crippled peace can sleep again. Your crippled family can be whole again. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this house right now. Come on, I feel something starting to take place in this house right now. Come on, your crippled relationship can be mended again. Your broken heart can be healed. Your Come on, somebody believe what I'm preaching in this house. God's getting ready to do the miraculous. God's getting ready to set somebody free. God's getting ready to deliver in this house. If you want it, I want you to come up here. If you want what I'm preaching about, if you can't get here, I'm going to believe that you're going to be with me right there where you're at. But if you can make it, come on up. God's getting ready to do it in this place right now. You better believe. You hear me right now. You better believe that man could have said no. That crippled man could have refused what was offered to him. He could have said, no, I'm comfortable right where I'm at. He could have said, 40 years, I've gotten used to this. It's no big deal. I'm comfortable here. I'll just accept my fate. No, he had to come with expectancy. He had to receive what God had for him. And so in this place, if you want to receive what God has for you, I want you to throw your hands up right now. And I want you to open your heart and open your mouth and let it begin to fill you. Let the miracle begin to happen in you. Let the victory begin to flow in you. Let the peace of God begin to operate in your mind.